All right, welcome to Unit 7, Lesson 1, Intro to Square Roots, and Simplifying Square Roots. So, start up here, let's look at this. We have 3 squared equals 9. This is something we know, we've done this before. We've squared 3 and we've got 9. My question is, if I'm at 9... How do I get back to 3? Because if I can go from 3 and perform something to get to 9, I should be able to go from 9 to 3. So I want you and your group to pause the video and discuss what you think can happen to make us go from 9 to 3. So go ahead, pause the video, and do that now. Okay. The operation that we have that lets us do that is called a square root. A square root is the opposite of squaring something. Just like addition is the opposite of subtraction, multiplication, division. They're like opposite operations of each other. So if we have, just in general, this b squared equals a, if we were to take the square root, that would give us that b equals the square root of a. And you'll notice here I did this. I did this plus or minus 3. And we're going to talk about that and think about that here in the next slide. So how many real answers are we going to have? So we have a plus this, the square root of a positive number the square root of 0, and the square root of a negative number. So in your group, what I want you to do is I want you to play around with these and see if you can figure out how many real answers we're going to get. Now you can plug some numbers in a calculator, or you can kind of think about it. So I want you to go ahead, pause the video, and do that now. Okay, so let's start with a positive square root. If you wanted just to try some numbers, let's say you try the square root of 4. If you plug that in a calculator, you'd probably just get 2. Because your calculator th thinks that you just want the positive answer. But sometimes your calculator doesn't always know what you're asking. Let's think about this 4. There's two ways we can get to 4 if we square. We know that if we do 2 squared, that equals 4. But there's another thing that we can square. Negative 2. Negative 2 squared is also 4. Negative 2 times negative 2. Two negatives make a positive, so 2 times 2 is 4. So if you take the square root of a positive number, you're going to get two real answers. Now onto the square root of 0. You plug in the square root of 0 to a calculator, it gives you 0. Because 0 is that weird, weird number. And that's the only thing you are going to get when you do 0 square root of 0 or 0 squared. You get one real answer. Now onto the square root of a negative number. Let's say you try the square root of negative 4. What you got was probably something along the lines of syntax error. Not able to do this. It's because you can't. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. So there are zero real answers if you try to take the square root of a negative number. Can't do it. Remember that. So if you have a positive number, you should have two real answers take the square root of 0, you have one real answer. If you see the square root of a negative number, no real answers. So let's talk about just squaring numbers and what we call perfect squares. So here I have two tables. In the top table we just have a number. In the second table we're going to square that number. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 
16, 25, and I skipped ahead here and just filled it out. This table is very, these two tables are very useful. If you can just, after you work with these enough, you'll get to know them. It's not something you have to sit and try to probably memorize. It's just as we worked with these square roots, you'll start to see that, oh, if I see 144, I know the square root of 144 is 12. You'll be able to just see them as we work with them. So, <clears throat> the x squared part is what we call perfect squares. They're things that we can square root and get a whole number. Because not every number we can square root gives us a whole number. So it's nice to know these perfect squares if we ever see them and we have to take the square root of them. So now let's talk about simplifying radicals. And here's where that comes in handy to know those perfect squares. Let's say we want to take the square root of 4. Well, we know the square root of 4 is equal to plus or minus 2. There's two answers. Well, now let's try the square root of 7. Well, the square root of 7 wasn't on our list. So it's not going to be a perfect square. So what's going to happen is... We get a decimal. We're going to get plus or minus 2.645751, and it just keeps going on forever. We get a number that's not nice. It's not a whole number. So that's why whenever we work with radicals, we just want to simplify them. This means that we're not going to get a decimal answer. We are going to just keep them with the square root in place many of the times. Sometimes it'll be nice and we'll be able to get rid of the square root, but sometimes we need to keep it because this is more accurate, this is more correct. And it's a lot easier to work with than a decimal that goes on forever and ever. So I'm going to show you two methods. The first method I call the primes method. This is where we're going to factor tree it down, and we're going to factor tree it down into all of its prime numbers. And if you remember, prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by 1 and themselves. So let's start with 50. So we're just going to break 50 down in a factor tree. So I know 5 and 10 goes into 50. I can't break down 5, but I can break down 10 into 5 and 2. I can't break down 5 or 2, so all I have left are primes. What you do once you factor treat it to just primes is you X everything out that's not prime. So anything that has a tree coming out of it, you need to X out. What you do now is you circle all your pairs of numbers, all your doubles. Sometimes you only have one, sometimes you'll have two. So here we have a pair of fives. What happens now is, for each pair that you have, you're going to take one outside the square root. So here we have a pair of fives, so we're going to have one five outside the square root. Then we look, we don't have any more pairs, so when you run out of pairs, you go to the square root, and whatever you have left over goes underneath the square root. So we have a two left over, so the two goes underneath the square root. And there we have it. We have five square root two. So that's the simplified version of square root of 50. It's a lot nicer to work with. So let's try this second example, the square root of 80 n cubed. Sometimes we will have radicals. Sometimes we will have radicals with variables underneath them. And the variable doesn't make it any harder. It just makes us have to go through another step. So whenever you have a variable and a number, first break down the number. So we're going to break down 80 into 8 and 10. And then that 8 breaks down to 4 and 2. And 4 breaks down to 2 and 2. And I know 10 breaks down to 5 and 2. So now I'm going to X out everything that's not prime. So I know not to work with it. And then I'm going to circle all my pairs. Well, I have one pair of twos here, and then as you see, I have another pair of twos right here. 
and then I have this 5 left over. So from this pair of 2's I know I'm going to pull out 1, 2. From this pair of 2's I'm going to pull out 1, 2. And when you pull something out and there's multiple of them, you put a times in between. Now I'm done with that, so I'm going to give myself some space. I'm going to write the square root, and all I have left over is a 5. Now if you have more than one number left over, just like on the outside, you'd multiply them. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to work on that n cubed. We're done with the number. So it's n cubed. So we have to think about how many n's is that. Well, that's 3. So we just write out how many n's it is, and then we circle pairs. So we have a pair of n's, so we know one n's going to go on the outside, which is also multiplying. And then we have one n left over, which goes on the inside. And then we simplify this. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times n is 4n. 5 times n is 5n. And there we go. So that is simplifying radicals using the primes method. So here are some examples for you to try on your own. So go ahead and do that now. And here are the answers to those examples. And I want you to realize that there are many different ways that you can use to factor these down sometimes. There's not always just one way to do it. So you may come up with a different way than I did or that your group members. But go ahead, pause the video, and check to make sure that you got the same answers that I did. Okay, now let's talk about method two. I call this the perfect squares method. In this method, we are going to try to find the biggest perfect square that goes into these, and that simplifies, I, the way I see it, I think it simplifies this a lot. So, to do the perfect square method, what you do is you look at the number, and you take that number and you divide it by two. So 147 divided by two is... It is 73.5. What you do after that is you think about all the perfect squares that are less than 73.5. So you want to pick the biggest one and see which, which one will go in it. So let's just list them. So it would be 64, 49, 36, 25, Stop thinking for a second. 16, 9, and 4. What you're going to do is you're going to take these perfect squares and you're going to divide 147 by them to see if they work. Now some of them you'll see right away you know they won't work. Like I know right away 64 is not going to work. But 49 might. So if we do 147 divided by 49, we see we get 3. And that's what we're looking for. We want to start at the top and work our way down because we get 49 and 3. Well, the nice thing about this is we know that the square root of 49 is 7. So we can stop at this step and say, okay, I know I've got to pull out a 7, and then I've got to pull, and then I have a 3 left over underneath. So I have the square root of 49 times the square root of 3 which breaks down to 7 root 3. And if you want, you could prime factor down 49 to see that it's 7 and 7. That's perfectly fine. The second example, okay, let's do 200 divided by 2, and we get 100. And sometimes it's nice because we can stop here. We know that 100 is a perfect square, so we don't have to list all the other ones. We know we stop at 100 and 2. So we know that we're going to have square root of 100, which is 10, and then we're going to have a square root of 2. And then the way that these variables work is the exact same as before. We just list them out in circle. So we get x, y, and then a y. So the way the variables work is exactly the same. There's no trick to them. So here I have four more examples that I want you to try the perfect square method on with your group now. 
And here are the answers to that. And you will notice that 512 was different. 256 was a perfect square. I know that wasn't one that I told you, but still, it would have been. I hope that you noticed that. If you didn't, you could have factored it down and found another way to find it. So go ahead, pause the video, and check these with your group. After that, the video is over.